I don't think a lot of people had really high expectations for the Broncos in 2017, and primarily that revolves around the quarterback position. And when you look at what they had in the fold, it's easy to understand why. You were ultimately primarily hitching your wagon to Trevor Simeon. Now you just looked at that quarterback situation and you're saying, is it Trevor Simeon? Is it Paxton Lynch? At one point in time, they bring in back, what, Brock Osweiler? Oh my God, it's that bad. A guy like Kaepernick and others can't get jobs, but Brock Osweiler's getting opportunities. Oh, oh, oh. And even though you're bringing in new head coach and Vance Joseph, in it's like you get that feeling that this is not going to go well. And the Broncos are a perfect example of you can only ride a defense so long. Uh, the quarterback has to do something. The offense has to be able to do something. And even when you really think about it, even going back to 2015, between Peyton Manning and Osweiler, they were carrying bad quarterbacks then and just happened to win a Super Bowl in spite of them. And still to this day, you think about it, Osweiler was better than Peyton Manning in 2015, and that is fat. So that speaks to just how beat up and done Peyton Manning truly was and how much that defense really had to carry him. Eventually, when you go all in, when you have a Hall of Famer like Peyton Manning at the quarterback position, when you go all in and spend like they did in free agency, those chickens start to come home to roost, and they have a little bit for the Denver Broncos. So this team is kind of one in, the, in one of those awkward positions where they're kind of in a transition period. They're not ready to totally throw in the towel and be in complete rebuild mode, but they're not really a championship contender either. One of the reasons they're not kind of back in the mix is Elway's past couple of drafts have not been great. I mean, let's look at it this way. They've caught a couple of notable picks, but no, none more notable than Paxton Lynch. This was a kid you took quarterback, in the 2016 draft, he traded up a little bit in round one to get him a pick 26. He was supposed to be the next guy. He was supposed to be the heir apparent. He was supposed to be the guy that moved that organization forward in the post Peyton Manning era. Two years later, he's gone. It's one thing if you cut a first round pick after two years. That's bad. That's really bad. That means either the guy got really badly hurt and it's unfortunate or he really, really sucked, and your evaluation was horrible. But when you miss like that on a quarterback, that is epically bad. To be so ready to give up on a guy that you invested a first-round pick in at the quarterback position to want to cut him after two years speaks to how badly they missed the evaluation, how wrong a lot of us were about Paxton Lynch, and just how much of a bust he truly was. Like when you're entertaining Chad Kelly being better than him because Chad Kelly is better than Paxton Lynch, it makes you wonder what the hell was Paxton Lynch all about. Because clearly he wasn't about trying to become a starting quarterback in the National Football League. My God. My God. So not something that gives you the most confidence in John Elway and his vision going forward. And I know I've talked before about, hey, the guy did build a Super Bowl championship team and a contending team. And he did. And he deserves some respect for that. But it feels like he's starting to get in his own way and he's starting to become his own worst enemy. And he's doing a very poor job over the past couple of years. So heading into the 2018 draft, this guy needed to produce and he needed to get some good players into the fold. Some guys you could actually count on to not be bust. And it feels like the Broncos did that. That's what it feels like right now anyways. Looking at getting a guy like Bradley Chubb um, in the top five. To me, the best edge rusher in that draft. You know, he was the best defensive player in that draft to me. And for the Broncos to be able to get him at five, thank you, Cleveland Browns. And now you're talking about pairing him with Von Miller. That could be a scary one-two combination at the edge rush position. Then you get guys like Cortland Sutton. You get guys like Royce Freeman, who's going to be their lead back this year. Cortland Sutton could be a long-term starter at wide receiver. Deshaun Hamilton, a really quality route runner. When they get him in round four, Josie Jewell in round four. It feels like the Broncos had a better draft. Now, how much that pays immediate dividends, I don't know, but it is a way to potentially build some positive momentum for this organization going forward, and they frankly need it because they need to be able to successfully transition away from that 2012-15 to 15 Peyton Manning uh, era that they had. 
Uh, looking ahead to 2018 for this team, what do I like about them? I like their pass rush. Von Miller, Bradley Chubb should be able to give some opposing quarterbacks some problems. Uh, their run defense is still pretty solid. Their secondary is still pretty good. I, although I know they lost to Keep to leave, you've still got Chris Harris. You've still got Bradley Roby. A couple of their young safeties should be able to do something. I still like that defense pretty much as a whole. I mean, they're still a pretty top-flight defense in the league. They're not the best anymore, but they're still, you would say, one of the best. And that's a good basis uh, to start your team with, although it won't really matter if they don't get more out of their offense. Um, I do worry about the running game. Like, I like Royce Freeman, and it seems like they're ready to roll with him as they should be. But you're still talking about a rookie, third round back. You know, how is he going to fit? How are they going to be able to deploy him? We will see. Then you give Case Keenum pretty big money to come in and improve and upgrade that quarterback position. Now, look, to me, Case Keenum is a upgrade, quite an upgrade over a guy like Trevor Simeon. There's no question. But is he really that level of quarterback? Was what he did in Minnesota in 2017 the start of a career? or kind of an aberration or a fluke that helped him get paid. That's what we're going to find out. And if things don't go well offensively early on, I really am going to be concerned about the divide in the locker room between the defense and the offense, because you know in Denver it's there. It's been there for a few years now. Hell, that crap was there back in 2015 with Peyton Manning. People won't talk about it because they ultimately won a Super Bowl, but the offense wasn't carrying its weight. In the past couple of years specifically, that defense has had to watch as the offense doesn't carry its weight. And at some point in time, that has an impact on the locker room and it can divide a team. And I'd be really, really surprised if Vance Joseph is able to get through the season uh, and still be the head coach in 2019. I really will be stunned. I'd be stunned if he makes it through the entire season if this offense does not produce early and more consistently than what they have the past couple of years. When you look at the schedule for this team, starting off in September, you go, you've got Seattle at home, then you've got Oakland at home, then you go to Baltimore, uh, and then host Kansas City. So three of your first four are at home at Mile High. That's good. It's a chance to potentially win a couple of games early, build up a little confidence, gain a little momentum. But if Denver doesn't get off to a decent start here, it's going to get ugly really quickly, especially if you look at like weeks 8, 9, 11. you got to go to Kansas City, you host Houston, then you got to go back and go to Los Angeles. So two divisional games, both of them on the road, a quality opponent like Houston sandwiched in the middle. This could get really ugly for the Broncos if they don't get off to a decent start. I look at them and I'm like, Mm, you got that defense. That defense is playoff worthy. That offense is not. I think at best the Broncos are a seven-win team, and they're probably looking for a new head coach in 2019 and probably looking to draft a quarterback in the 2019 draft as well. Because I just don't see where Case Keenum's going to mean that much of a difference. I just don't see, even with if you got Demiris Thomas and you've got Emmanuel Sanders healthy and ready to contribute for a full year, I just don't know that this offense has enough. I could be surprised, could always be wrong, but seven and nine to me kind of feels like the ceiling for this team. 